Wonderful. You're probably still working from home. Yes, we're all remote, so we I'm always home. Oh. Yeah. And better. I know. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, it's nice meeting you. I've heard lots about you. Well, thanks. Hopefully some of it was good. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, I've watched um, the couple, you know, webinars that you've done with Ian, so. Wonderful. Yeah. So how, uh, how do you normally do this? Do I share my screen? Do you share yours? Normally, I would be sharing my screen and then I just ask very specifically, hey, do you want me to go through a regular product tour? Do you have specific questions for me? Um, and I kind of let you guide it. Okay. Well, let's, let's go through kind of like normal. Okay. And we'll, we'll just, we'll just see how it goes. And, and for those of you that are listening and not able to see, I'm joined by Crystal from Synchro. And Crystal, what exactly is your title there? I'm the sales team lead. Okay. Yep. Yes. So I was actually the first ever salesperson hired for Synchro. So. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. So been here from the beginning. How, how many do they have now? We have four. Okay. Yep. Oh, total team size? Total team size were, geez, over 50 now. Um, oh, so wow. our yeah, our sales team is super uh, low pressure, um, very consultative type uh, sure. driven, and demos are kind of what our goal is with anybody that's trying out the software. Because as I mean, as you know, looking at an RMM alone is a lot to take in. Looking at a mm -hmm. PSA alone is a lot to take in, but taking them both in at the same time is pretty intense. And so we do like to provide product tours that are very, very specific to your business model um, so that you're not wasting a ton of time if you have very specific blockers or questions that you want to get out of the way before, because that's, that's what it's all about. We want to make sure that it's a great fit for everyone. And so if there is, sure. you know, those things that we can save you some time on while you're testing, happy to do that. Well, very cool. So I, I think the, the most important thing for any MSP to understand is, is like you said, this is not just an RMM, not just a PSA, it's both. Right. So um, I remember looking at Synchro, gosh, it's, it's probably been over a year since I've actually really given it a close look. Okay. The dashboard already is pretty. <laughs> yes, it is very, it's pretty to look at and it's very simple and intuitive to use. And so that is what I like to kind of highlight and I'll, I can kind of just dive in and, and anytime you want to um, sure. hop in and ask questions, I think that makes a lot of sense. So um, what I do like to do is highlight the areas where the power of having the RMM and PSA um, is, is that there are specific automations and things that you can do that you just wouldn't find from a competitor. Um, so I like to highlight those for sure. I'm in a customer detail screen now. Um, and there's a few things that I like to just show off right away. One being our custom fields. Um, not only can you store whatever information you want. I mean, these can be drop down buttons options, they can be check boxes, but they can also be encrypted. So we do have a password vault built right in. Um, so you can store encrypted fields within these custom fields. But the main thing here, and I'll bring this up in a little bit, is we have a built in PowerShell module that can read and write to these custom fields. So like if you were to be storing like a certain um, like license key or something like that in this custom field, you can actually access those from a PowerShell module script, which is incredible. Um, it is incredible. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, we've added this ability to like disable scripting straight from this customer um, page. But like before we did that, there was like a really cool example where if you had like billing status as like 
um, delinquent, for example. You could have scripts check that billing status and then not run if it was delinquent or something like that. So like there's some really, really neat things you could do there. Um, we also, of course, you know, you can manage all of your contact information and they can have their own custom fields as well. Uh, we do have the ability to store credentials. So the main difference between credentials and storing um, encrypted custom fields, credentials, you can actually pass these to your customers via the customer portal, whereas okay. uh, custom fields are going to be internal only. Um, speaking of the customer portal, I think it's worth just um, grabbing a new tab and showing this really quick because I, I'm also going to kind of highlight maybe some of the things that you haven't seen that we've updated in the last year. So we've given the ability to customize the color scheme. Of course, you can add your logo, but you can also have different portal permissions now. So what I'm showing you here is an example if someone had like full admin access um, so they can see everything. Um, they can see tickets, invoices, they could approve or decline estimates straight from the portal. Um, they can see their associated assets. And then this is where you can make documentation viewable for your customers. So if you did want to pass credentials or a how-to guide, whatever that might be, you can do that through documentation. Of course, your customers can create tickets for you from here. And then lastly, it's just worth mentioning that we do integrate with payment um, processors. So your customer could even log in and pay their invoice straight from their portal as well. Nice. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say this regarding the um, customer portal. Yeah. So I, I feel like there's, there's a lot of, it almost feels like spaghetti thrown at the wall. So for me, I'm, I'm one of the, less scrolling let's just have buttons to take them places I kind see. of guys but i will say that short of that what you have here is very functional and it's very fast it is fast that's for sure and i do i really like that idea of just like a, a ui change where instead of it it like gives lists just having almost just buttons i dig it i think that's a good idea um and like I said, what's kind of nice about this too is what we've added is permissions. So like if you wanted someone only to be able to essentially like see the tickets that they've created, they could log in and really that's all they would see. So we have um, really added some additional options there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Now, if we just head back to this customer detail screen, there's a few things um, and I'll kind of do just a major high level. Um, of course, you can create appointments. We do have integrations with both Office 365 and Google Calendars. Those are two-way syncs. Um, you've got all your ticket information, estimates, invoices, all of that good stuff. One thing, though, that I do like to show, of course, you can see your customers' assets. You can tell right away if they're online or offline. But this little quick view modal, anytime you see a magnifying glass, um, it usually gives you a little pop out. And this is one of my favorite things here. So you can be on the customer detail screen, click of a button and see asset custom fields. You could see a thumbnail of what's happening on their machine right now. You could launch into a remote session, start a live chat. Um, so absolutely incredible things that you could do straight from the customer detail screen. So that's just, again, having, having that RMM fully embedded. Um, and of course, the ability to create a ticket from here. Uh, that's kind of usually where I go next is to create a ticket is, does that sound right? Or do you want me to head in a different direction? That's, that's good. Um, so with, with looking at this, that was a list of all of the assets or devices, whatever you guys refer to them as, mm -hmm. that you clicked on to get into this pop-up, right? Yeah, I just, I just okay. grabbed this one and used that little magnifying glass. So just comparing to like Autotask and I think Kaseya BMS, I mean, both of those when integrated with their platform can do this as well. Great. Good, good, good. So I think like there's uh Oh, I lost you. Um, 
so with that said, let's just create a ticket and I'll kind of hop through. Hey, Crystal. Oh, I'm not sure if you're able to hear me, but you you went blank for the last oh. seconds or so. Oh, no. Oh, geez. Okay. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. I wonder if you were having like a connection issue or something. I Well, I'm in Spokane and we have some major weather today. So I apologize okay. for that for sure. Okay. Um, so I'm just creating a ticket now and I'm creating a ticket straight from that quick view modal. And hmm. what I've done here is I have different workflows that you can set up. This is my default. I only have three required fields. And of course that's done by default. So I'm not having a ton of fields to create when I'm on a demo. So I can just say, you know, this is a demo ticket. I can select an issue type. These are totally customizable. So maybe I'm just saying, you know, this is remote support and they called and they've got a virus on their machine or something like that. Um, of course, I can fill out a ton of other things. I like to mention that we do have custom fields on tickets as well. Um, there's a ton of different use cases for custom fields with tickets. One being, if this was something like a new computer setup, it can have then additional fields that you can fill out and then you can have some that are required. The other major use case of having custom fields in a ticket is for example, I'll choose virus removal. And I'm gonna show you just by selecting that custom field what, um, what I just enabled to happen. So I've got my asset already attached to the ticket because I created it from that assets uh, quick view modal. So if I create the ticket here, once I hop into that ticket, you can see here that since I added the custom field of virus removal, it auto attached my virus removal worksheet. So um, that's another use case. So um, this is kind of a checklist that lets me go through and make sure I don't forget anything. Yeah, exactly. And so there's even a setting when you create these worksheets, if you want it to be required that this worksheet is finalized before you can resolve the ticket. So they could be anything from like drop down options, check boxes, or like a custom text field as well. A um, few things that are pretty awesome just from within the ticket. Of course, you can track time a ton of different ways. You can just use our little um, play button and it's going to start tracking time here. If you hit stop, it's going to enter it as a labor line item. You can also just simply view this log and then you can say, okay, I was there for an hour. You can put some notes and you can add that time to the ticket as well. Um, you can see that you have the option whether you want to charge this time or not. This is a global setting. You either have that charging by default or you can choose which what you want to charge for. So this is just complementing the fact that we really accommodate for a lot of different billing models. So if this is more of like, a, you know, an all you can eat type of model, you're tracking your time, it's just not going to show up on that invoice. Um, so you can show it in a report and everything like that. So we're in the ticket. You've got your asset attached. That quick view modal stays right intact from the ticket as well. So whether you want to launch into a remote session, run a script, you know, start a chat from here, you can do that. Um, so again, super helpful there. You can also then communicate with your customer. So whatever you want to type here, you can choose whether you want to email, it can be a private or a public note, and then you can also enable text messaging and be able to text message your customer straight from the ticket. Um, you can send an, like an RMM agent installer link. We actually added this really quick option, um, and you can even select which policy you're wanting to send. We added that um, kind of when COVID hit and everything went even more remote. So that was kind of one of those just ease of use things that we added in there. Um, we do have a full inventory system built into Synchro. So really you can also add whatever, if you sold them a new laptop or something like that, you can just start typing it and pull that in from your products and services and add that to the ticket as well. Um, let's see here before I kind of transition into how quick it is to turn a ticket into an invoice or create a reoccurring invoice. Do you have ticketing type of questions before we kind of. So the only question I have is regarding the billing. Uh, so this goes back to my repair shopper days. I never did really understand the, I'm gonna say right way for an MSP to use repair shopper for billing. Because like you said, it has that charge now, you can charge later. So 
So let's say we have a client that is on, we'll call it an all you can eat monthly model. Uh, we set them up on traditionally an auto task or connect wise, we would set up a contract. Are there contracts in synchro? So it, there are contracts, but they are, they have a different meaning that they would in auto tasking connect wise. Um, so in synchro, you would essentially, you'd set up a reoccurring invoice, which is, is exactly what that is. It's just called something right. different. Totally cool. So when setting up that recurring invoice, do you need to say, for example, all of this type of work is included, so it's not billable or how, how does that work in synchro? Really, really, really good question. So there's actually a couple ways that you can do this. So if, if, if like, 90% or higher of your customers are like an all you can eat model. I would actually just have that that setting in the ticket settings where you're tracking your time. It's just not showing up on an invoice and I'll show you. So when I get to the reoccurring invoice, I'll show you kind of the, the purpose for that. Um, but there are also ways where and I can show you a contract where you can just for specific customers, you can have any sort of labor or anything that's included in their plan just zeroed out by default, like you would override what you would normally charge people labor. So there's two ways that you can actually accomplish that. It just pretty much depends on how you want your reoccurring invoice to look. So if I go to a reoccurring invoice, because some all you can eat models, they, 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 everything's included, but they still on their reoccurring invoice want them each customer to be able to see every single line item mm -hmm. that, oh, I was there two hours, but it was zero dollars. So right. if that's the case, you would absolutely use contracts and you would zero out those labor rates and you would have this. So it would add any of those pending ticket charges, even though they were zeroed out and they would add them as line items on the reoccurring invoice. Um, if you didn't want to show that and you wanted it to just be like, for example, this monthly MSP fee and you charge them a certain amount, you know, every month, you could have a very plain, simple uh, reoccurring invoice. And then you could essentially just use one of our reports to show them the actual hours. So it's more of how you want your reoccurring invoice to look. And with that said, just looking at our reoccurring line item types, these standard line items, these are going to be static line items. So it's like whatever is your flat rates or if you're charging, you know, a certain thing that would be pulled from your products and services. Our data backup line, this is our integration with MSP360 or formerly known as Cloudberry. So it's going to pull from there. And then these are our dynamic counter options. So again, this is where having that RMM and PSA combined is super helpful uh, because like say you wanted to bill someone for you could create a saved asset search and say, hey, I'm going to bill this person for all of their workstations a certain price. And then I'm going to go in and create another line item and say for all their servers, I'm going to bill them this price. So it's a dynamic counter. So you don't have to ever go up, you know, update your reoccurring invoice if you add workstations and that kind of thing. It's a similar type of thing with the RMM package. So you can actually bill like if you if this person is level three platinum, um, policy and they have, you know, 37 endpoints. You just put your price in there and it's going to dynamically count it over here. And then the last dynamic counter is the customer contact counter. So I know, you know, a lot of MSPs are billing per employee, you know, or per seat instead of maybe ah. our server. So this is like if they're created as a contact for that customer, this is also a dynamic counter as well. That's awesome. Yes. So we give you a lot of different options. It's worth mentioning here at this point, just um, I know that um, cloud services are incredibly important and sometimes a headache to bill for. So we do have a phenomenal integration with PAX 8. Um, and so their, their actual, like if you had Office 365 licenses that you were selling through PAX 8, you sync those with your products and services in Synchro, and then you can update, add, or remove Office 365 licenses like as many times throughout the month, and it'll automatically update this reoccurring invoice. So it's pretty slick. Awesome. Okay, let's see here. Any questions here on invoicing do you think I should dive into further? Not at this time, no. Okay. Um, I think the last thing to just worth mentioning, since I said it during our customer portal um, little view, is that we do have 
integrations with payment processors. So if you did have an integration, you have the option to like automatically charge a card on file or something like that too. Yeah, I'm a Stripe user. I saw that was in the list, so. It is, yep, exactly. And so you could just have it charge it on like automatically. And then if it failed, there's even an option to recharge it. So there's some cool things you can do with that. Nice. Okay, so I will take a quick second. Let's transition over to the RMM. Um, so this assets and RMM screen here gives you just obviously a list of all of your endpoints. You can search by customer, um, site, asset type, that kind of thing. Uh, we gave you the ability to minimize this section. Um, that was a huge request just to be able to um, quickly just get to your assets. So we did give you the option to do that. Um, I like to show off saved asset searches in pretty much any time I'm showing off Synchro because I just showed during a reoccurring invoice, this is where like that workstation was pulling from because I created a saved asset search for it. But mm. this could be for anything. So it could be billing, it could be using our mailer module. Say you wanna send out a mass email based upon everyone that does not have Bitdefender installed. You could use it as a selling tool, that kind of thing. You can, you know, drill down to very specific who has this application installed and what version. So there's a lot of really neat things you can do with that saved asset search. Um, you've got obviously this view that is completely customizable. So if you want to rearrange, move around columns, that kind of thing, we got very granular with this um, just to make sure you're viewing what you want at first glance. Um, that quick view modal stays intact pretty much anywhere you see that magnifying glass. So what you saw from the customer detail, ticketing, um, it's also here on the assets and RMM screen. Um, of course, you've got Synchro Live. So this is our proprietary built-in remote session tool. By default, it's going to take you to the task manager with the ability to stop processes here. Um, you've also got a service manager. This is going to lift off, list off all of the services. They're searchable. You can start, stop, and restart them from here. Um, we've added an event viewer. So if you haven't looked at Synchro in depth in about a year, this is going to be brand new. Um, you can search all of your events. You can even filter by, you know, what type of log or what type of level. And then anything that you do. Yeah, exactly. And then anything you want to drill down into even further, you have the ability. You can copy that right into a clipboard. And, and this is really fast. Yeah. Yeah. So, so answer me this. Is this... Um, how do I phrase the question? Because I, I don't know how technical you are. So is the information that you're viewing sitting on the customer's computer or is the information actually on the Synchro server? It's on the Synchro server. If I, if I know correctly, I can make sure that I'm answering that properly. Um, because I'll show you then, I mean, as we drill in, obviously there's a difference between you, what I'm looking at here and like an actual, the remote desktop as well. Gotcha. And then um, how often does the customer computer like ping the Synchro server? It depends. So with this, this is happening in real time. Um, okay. With with like or our organically built in triggers, the actual agent checks in every 15 minutes. Um, offline alerts and, and scripts that run and things like that, those are in real time. Um, so the answer is there's a lot of different times that it checks in. Okay. Um, us, after Event Viewer, you got your system information um, that's kind of helpful here. You've got a file system. So we've added a lot of additional things to this file system just as of recently, um, giving you the ability to create new folders, rename, cut, copy, zip, all of that good stuff. Um, and then you've got, this is the remote desktop connection. So there's a few things here that I, I love to highlight just because we've added so many things here. Um, Obviously, the system tray icon, this is brandable. So this can be your little icon there. And then you can add so many things to the system tray icon. And the few things that I really like to highlight, of course, they can log into their portal that I showed you earlier. But we've added, if, if you create this, it's, it's called our agent contact form. 
So now they can easily create a ticket without having to go to their portal. Um, you can have certain field required. They can even grab a screenshot from here. Um, and so this is customizable. And this, this is this is Kabuto. This is similar. Yeah, this is very similar to what you would have seen in Kabuto. Yep. Yep, exactly. Um, and what's nice about this is on a policy level. So for example, like here, I've added like a normal support request and then like maybe you want to do an emergency ticket. The nice thing about this is that on the back end, like you can choose like whatever, whichever option someone chooses, you can have it set to a specific priority or ping a specific technician based upon which agent contact form they fill out, which is kind of cool. Um, and then, of course, you've got live chat. So this is something that we've just added as of a few weeks ago and continue to add a ton of new updates. So chat's lovely. Um, and then lastly, you've got your terminal. So whether it be command line or PowerShell, you can be running things in the background from here. Awesome. All right. Yes. So, so that remote desktop, that's all running within the browser. Yes. And... Do you know if this is HTML5? That I don't know. I know that it's our proprietary build. I mean, I know that obviously we have integrations with other remote software tools, but as far does, as... Does it work on an iPad? Yes. Then it's HTML5, probably. Yes, and it, yeah, we use it. it I, I know this for certain. I use it on when we go to like conferences quite often. I'll use it right on the iPad and it works really well. Okay. And then I, I did see that you integrate with things like Screen Connect. So really quickly, how does that work? How do I tell Synchro that this computer in Synchro's RMM is this computer in Screen Connect? So do. It, it's super slick. Um, so it's actually you it through the app center you you know bring over your api key for screen connect for example when you set up a policy you there's like a click of a button where you would just enable bring your own screen connect so when you deploy synchro it's going to also de deploy screen connect and what's nice is if that is already an asset you have in screen connect it'll just link the two um, if it's if it's brand new on if it doesn't exist in screen connect it'll doubt it'll deploy using Synchro's agent and then um, it'll show up in Screen Connect. And then what's really amazing is that, so instead of it just saying Synchro Live, if you have that integration set up, and this is the same, it's worth noting, this is the same Screen Connect team viewer and uh, Splash Shop that it'll just say remote session tool here now. And so it'll give you like a drop down. And so it's not gonna replace Synchro Live, it's just gonna give you- It just lets you choose between them. Yep, yep, exactly. So if you had Splash Top and Screen Connect and Synchro, you could link all of them you and could. then you'd have you'd have all of the choices in the drop down then. Yep. Okay. Indeed. Um so let's just go into that device that I was just remoted into. Um it's worth just showing here. Obviously, you have a lot of information. You've got the overview of the machine, recent activity. Um you've got your policy that it's applied. So that's where I'm going to spend most of the, the next couple of minutes here is just talking through policies. That's what drives this endpoint. So it's going to tell it on this screen what it's monitoring for. So if it's the very base package, you can see I'm only monitoring for a few things. Um, I don't have an antivirus installed. Um, within Synchro, you have the option of Bitdefender, WebRoot, and MCSoft. And I'll show you how you can enable those on a policy level. Of course, you can run scripts on an asset level. So you can see anything that's ran in the past, if there was anything queued up, and then if there's anything running on a reoccurring basis. So you can add things straight. If you want it just added to an individual asset, you can do that from here. Um, you have the ability to set up a system check. So I, you mentioned Kabuto. So I'm sure you've seen this on the Kabuto side, but you can mm -hmm. ping. Um, so you can add your remote host information, have it check every so often, notify or rearm. You have an up-to-date active list of all installed applications. There's even a notification setting in your admin section if you want to be notified if an end user is either installing or uninstalling new things. And then you've got Windows patches. So from this screen, of course, it's all configured on the policy level, but from this screen, you can see if there's something missing. We have great reports that also show missing patches as well. You can install straight from here. Um, and then you can see, of course, everything that's been recently installed as well. 
So the one thing that I'm finding like every ish RMM is struggling with is, you know, Windows 10 patching because just the way that Microsoft has done their patching. So am I going to experience the same types of issues with Synchro's Windows patching as I am with all of the other RMMs? Like you guys don't have a magic bullet that fixes these stupid issues that we're running into with just all of these, like the, the major uh, releases, I think is the big problem. It's the major ones. That is right. I think like you kind of nailed it on the head. I think everyone's dealing with the same issue with the major releases. And so what most of our users do now is run a script um, just to, to push that. So I think like you're saying, I think it's kind of something that everyone's dealing with. Aside from that, though, um, I haven't heard of any issues with things not patching or running on the schedule that you select. It would be really cool if, um, you know, a lot of MSPs are switching over to, um, well, uh, everything's switching over to Microsoft 365 now because yeah. they're rebranding Office 365. But um, a lot of MSPs are, are switching their licensing so that it's the Windows and Office licensing. And they're, they're then getting like Intune licenses yeah. It would be super neat if Synchro could somehow, I don't know, and this is me not really thinking it through. I'm just thinking out loud. It'd be great if you guys could just link up with Intune and have Intune do those, those major updates. That way we don't have to deal with scripts. And I suspect when we're doing it through Intune, it's it's all like hands off whereas when when we do it through the scripting you know it, it comes up and hi welcome to your new windows 10 computer and it takes you through that stupid wizard every time yeah so i i'm just like i said i'm just thinking out loud that would be neat i don't know what that looks like though Absolutely. And I, I think that I, I'll definitely bring this up to the dev team too, if they're not already thinking about it. Um, and I'm sure they'll see this anyways. So yeah, I think that would be good for sure. Um, with that said, I'm going to hop over just really quick. Let's hop over to policies because I think it'd be worth just showing you. Obviously, that's the, I'm going to go into the asset that this was the policy that was on that machine. Just so you can see like why it looked the way that it did and where you would configure certain things. Of course, if I had just to, to reference the third party remote session tool, if I had one of those three integrated with this demo account, it would be like its own section similar to this. And it would like be a checkbox that says, bring your own screen connect. So that's how you would enable it on a policy level. Nice. Yeah. So pretty simple click of a button. You've got your organically built in triggers here. Um, and of course, some of them do have the option to auto resolve and then you can add additional drives as well. So this is definitely something that you probably haven't seen if you haven't looked. <laughs> yeah, because we all love getting those alerts that our uh, our SD card is missing or whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that it doesn't automatically just detect every drive exactly. and start notifying us about everything. Yes, so yes, yeah, I, I, I'm glad that I was able to show you that too. So um, that's been really helpful. It was huge, like hugely requested. Um, and you can see the reason for that for sure. Um, we've also added process and service monitors. Um, so I'll just, I'll pop this out into a different screen because it's worth showing this. Um, this was a huge feature um, and it is pretty beautiful. So if we just go to like a new process to monitor here, um, you can add the process name, um, and then what's nice is like you can have it start the process if it's not running. Um, you can monitor like the CPU, like the CPU of it and that kind of thing. You can also then immediately like you can choose which type of an alert you want for something like that. And then what's nice is you can even generate and like an automated remediation. So um, whether it's whether it's uninstalling something, for example, or restarting, whatever it might be, creating a ticket, all of that good stuff. Um, you have some really nice settings that are pretty granular. And then once you've created those, you can just add, they'll be in this drop down 
that if you wanted to add that to your policy here. So to clarify, we can, we can monitor for specific processes. Mm -hmm. And if a process is running, let's yeah. call it uh, Steam. If we see Steam running on somebody's work computer, mm -hmm. then I can have a script that automatically uninstalls Steam and all of the stupid games that they've installed with it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, that was, this was a huge ad. And then like, like you're saying, the ability to auto, like automatically run a script through an automated remediation with a click of just a button here that'll pull that process. So you don't have to re-enter in any information. We made that pretty simple um, and automated, which is awesome. Um, all right, so you've got your event log policy alerts. We've got some presets for you if you wanted to do some more additional hard drive monitoring, but you can also create you know, your own event log policies as well. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your resource usage alerts, of course, status notifications, and then here's your Windows updates. So I'll open this in a new tab as well. Um, so with Windows, you'll see that you can add multiple policies here to this master policy that you're working on. And the reason for that is, let's just, I'll create a new one just so you can see the use case here you're selecting specific categories to run on schedules. So again, if you wanted a totally different schedule for every single category, you can just create new policies for that and apply them. Um, so if, for example, if you want like feature packs and definition updates to just patch, hey, I just want those to patch like monthly on the fourth Thursday of the month or Friday, whatever that might be. And then if it requires a reboot, you can choose how you want Synchro to respond to that as well. Um, so you can get pretty granular on a category level and then you'll just apply those here and you can apply as many as you want, just as long as they don't contradict each other. Hmm. Um, oh, here's some really cool stuff too that we've added, uh, recently. Uh, we've always had third party application patch management. And again, if you're familiar with Kabuto, you've probably seen a similar UI here. Um, but we've added some really awesome things. So you've got like your built in applications here, the most common ones that we've seen, but then you also can add any application to this third party application patch management that is in Chocolatey's repository. So really like if you add whatever it might be, if you wanna keep Zoom up to date, for example, um, you can just, you could obviously just select that and have it um, install and update and that kind of thing. So you can add all of the additional apps that you'd like as long as it's in that repository. And then now you can even schedule uh, your third party patches, which you haven't been able to schedule in the past either. So is this running the free version of Chocolatey to do all of this? Or do you guys have a, an agreement with Chocolatey where you're getting the licensed version? I believe this is the licensed version. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. And I think there's like, gosh, I think the last time, there's like over 6,000 applications that you can just add. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah. The time. Um, can we go through and get rid of some? Like, there's there's no way in hell I would install like Thunderbird on any of my clients' computers. <laughs> so now you can't customize this list, but you can say yes. Do not install that ever. Okay. Yes. <laughs> can can you guys add uninstall to the list? That sure would be super. So. That actually is something that right now is, as far as I know, it's more in, I can't, I'm trying to figure out where that feature request lives. Cause I think where that'll actually end up happening is from the applications list on the asset. They'll just be like a click option to uninstall. That's where that feature request will be. Um, so yes, I'm hopefully, hopefully that'll be coming soon. For for ease of use, I would strongly recommend just just so that way it can be right here in the policy itself. Mm -hmm. I would love to see each of these apps because I believe Chocolatey can do it. I'd love to just see a uninstall as a as a little radio button. Yeah. Yep. 
I like it. I just wrote that down. I'll be able to bring that to the dev team too. Cause uh, yeah, I, I can see some value there for sure. Like you're saying ease of use rather than like taking care of it after the fact. Right. Yeah. After the fact, it should be in the application list too, mm -hmm. but I could see if, if we want to just set up a policy, like, man, how cool would it be if we had a policy that just whenever we set up a, a new client, that policy can go through and remove all the junk that we want that Chocolatey supports. How cool. Yeah. Would very cool. Very, very cool. Yes, I'll definitely bring that to the team because I, I can see how much time that would save. Um, okay, let's see here. I'll kind of quickly go through. Obviously, like I said, we've got Bitdefender, Webroot, and MCSoft. They're all deployed with essentially just enabling them. The main difference is Bitdefender and Webroot, they have separate portals. So with Bitdefender, it's their, it's a full Gravity Zone version. Synchro is going to install. That asset's going to show up in Gravity Zone where you're going to apply all of your antivirus settings there, as well as it's a very similar design with Webroot. So I think it's like Manage Anywhere. Uh, I think that's what it's called, Webroot. So um, kind of that similar design where all of the real granular settings are done through their portal. And then MCSoft, you have the option act. So actually, because there's a lot of settings that you can do right here within Synchro um, and you can choose whether you wanna manage it through Synchro or you can spin up their cloud console and manage it the same way as the other two also. So um, good. I I, I got to ask the serious question. I yeah. know um, a, a couple years ago with before you guys even merged. Mm -hmm. um, so back in the Kabuto was was the, the big thing with all the break fix guys and MCSoft. Apparently MCSoft was like pissing all of these break fix guys off by sending out the little pop-ups on the end user computers and hey you want to renew your license just do it directly with us you know that kind of crap so i feel like mcsoft is the best way to put it i feel like mcsoft is like consumer grade stuff are there people actually using mcsoft for for small medium business um yes there yes the answer to that is yes. Um, and there was a huge amount of issue and complaints um, back when this didn't exist. Yeah. So now you do have the ability, like you basically, it's just not, it's not gonna interrupt the user. Um, they now have quite a bit of different scan options to make it uh, far lighter, uh, like as far as resource usage as well. So they've made a lot of improvements. And one of those has been, you know, they did split up, spin up that cloud console, which that didn't even exist back, um, you know, three years ago. So um, they, they have been making some modern improvements and this, just that um, being able to um, not enable MCSoft browser add-ons, that has been huge. Um, so now our users are a lot of our, we have a lot of users that are happy with MCSoft. So, so it's the browser add-on that sucks. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm hearing. Yes. All right. So you hear here, folks, if you decide you want to use MCSoft, don't check that box. Don't check it. it <laughs> don't check it. Yeah. Your, your end users don't like that very much and you'll just sure. get complaints. Um, all right, so the last couple things here on a policy level, I showed off that system tray icon and this is where you set up everything you wanna to add to it. So as you can see, like there are a ton of options. I'll just pull this one down. You can send them to a URL, have them log into their portal. You can have them download a file, send an email, obviously you can read, but that agent contact form, this one was huge. Um, everyone loves this. The other one obviously is enabling live chat. Because that, I mean, that doesn't come on by default um, in that system mm -hmm. tray icon. So that live chat is something that you just enable via the system tray icon. Um, last couple of things is these scripts. So this is where um, the setup script is the ability to run a script upon synchro installation. So if there is, if, if you have like, you know, maybe you're a very you know, specialized MSP that you deploy as like a dental software, for example, you could have a deployment script in this setup script. So you could even 
I mentioned the ability to read or write to custom fields. You can have a script that gathers information and populates a custom field for you, um, which is pretty phenomenal. And then you have script schedules. And I, I just have like a very basic example of clean up the recycle bin every Friday night. Um, and so, so that that's obviously a really nice feature to be able to just deploy in mass on a policy level. Um, and then I think from here, I, I feel like we've got 15 minutes. I just want to make sure that I'm like highlighting the main things that I want to make sure that you see. Sure. Um, go ahead. So I've got, I've got questions. So, uh, and a comment. So the comment is, uh, right under the, I'll call it the logo where it says Synchro MSP demo, there's the training button. That actually looks helpful yeah. as opposed to what some other tools are using. Um, and it's and it's like right there, it's in your face. Uh, I have not had a chance to actually go through any of these videos, but it is on my to-do list this week. I'm gonna go through and, and get some education on Synchro. So, <laughs> I, I did want to throw that out there for, for those of you that are watching. Um, watch the next video I do as well, because that one I'll be able to recap some of this stuff. Uh, chat, is that like a central location in that main menu? This? Yes. Is that like a central location to chat with all my clients? Yeah, so, well, this is going to show you, this is going to show you any open chats that you have. Uh -huh. um, and I, I can't remember, I think I thought, yeah, you can initiate a chat from here as well. So you can just like choose the customer. Yep, exactly. So yeah, and I, and I think just cause you brought that up too, the training tab, if you sign up for a trial, um, that training tab will be there by default. But I, I think there's a few things that on my demo account that might not look exactly what yours looks like. And so just to note here that you can go to your admin section and go to tabs customization and just make sure um, you can rearrange and move things around. So you, you have everything there that you need. So I don't know if that chat thing, I don't know if the chat tab is there by default on your, when you spin up a new trial, just to make note of that. Good to know. Well, it was on mine. Oh, good. Perfect. So, and I, I spun mine up last week, I want to say. Great. Good. That makes that, sense. That feels right-ish. It does. <laughs> I think it feels right. I, I definitely think that feels right. Yes. Very um, pretty. All right. So, assets RMM, scripts. We, we talked about scripts, right? We talked a little bit about scripts. The main, the only thing I wanted to show you because I mentioned it a couple times is just that ability to read or write to those um, custom fields. So these script variables, this is how you do that. So you have your platform variables. You have access to everything. So within a script, it can be, you know, a contact custom field. So whatever that might be, if you scroll below this scripting window here, though, this is where the real magic is living in this PowerShell module. So if you just put this into the first line of your script, you can see that, like, you can run a script and have it, you know, log that activity in the actual asset field. But the other things that are worth noting here is you can have a script run that then creates a ticket. You can have a script run that logs time in the ticket. And so this yes. is, it's just unbelievable. You can be remediating an issue. So like that steam example that you gave, it's like, Hey, I want to set up an automation to wipe that. But I also want to create a ticket, log some notes in that ticket, add 30 minutes and let them know, Hey, you know, this isn't okay or whatever, but at whatever time that is, you can essentially be adding billable time to a ticket while you sleep, essentially. Um, this is great. So that, um, I just want to clarify a few things that I'm saying. I'm going to compare you guys to some other platforms. So that right there is some ConnectWise automate and manage level uh, awesomeness. So that's impressive. But also impressive, if we go back up to the top where you were showing me the variable stuff. Mm -hmm. So the, the variable name, uh, that first one, not the value, the one with the dollar sign. Uh, oh, this, yes. So I'm drawing a blank because my brain's so filled with, with everything I've learned. Um, 
What goes where? Okay, so this variable name, like you can literally name it whatever you want. And so that when you go over to this value and if, uh, I thought I had like a bit locker key in there somewhere. But like if you had like, say you wanted to pull a custom field for your Acronis API key, this would be like Acronis, for example. So that when you are referencing this value in the script, this is, this is the keyword for that value. Gotcha. Okay. So um, let me say this. The fact that the value right there is a drop down and we can just scroll through and pick the one we want is absolutely huge. Um, and it has a search. Now, I saw it had a, uh, there was a zip code in there. Can you search the word zip or can you search the actual zip code itself? Um, good question. Like if you typed in 992, wow, okay. So it'll search through both. Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm seeing here, so when on Kaseya, for example, Kaseya's scripting, um, you, it'll do variables and all kinds of fancy stuff with them, but you, you have to open up their documentation and like take 10 minutes just to find the document so you can find all of the system variables that are available to you. Oh, wow. And I don't even remember how to do this with custom created variables. I only remember how to do it with the system ones. So this, um, you, you've made some custom ones for things like a Cronus and Bitdefender. So I could literally make a variable called Steve's awesome variable mm -hmm. or custom entry, whatever. And, and this thing could pull the information out and use it in a script, or it can take information from the computer and store it. Yes. With the yes. Script. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to, to store my, my BitLocker keys for all of my clients that are HIPAA compliant and I have to be running BitLocker, mm -hmm. I can have a, an, a blank, you know, empty uh, uh, section for a BitLocker key on every single endpoint. And then I can create a, a script that requests that information. And when it requests that information, it somehow spits it into that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Now, now taking that and spitting it into there is probably a, a whole nother piece of automation, but it, it, it's doable. It's definitely doable. And I like, this is where like my technical background will right. end, but I know a, like we do have, um, we try to give you some quick help here. So this is how mm -hmm. you would set the value. I don't know the part of the script that would actually gather that information, but at least this is the second part of that. <laughs> no, that's, that's really awesome. Yeah, it is. And um, so with that said, just the last little thing, cause I know I don't, I don't know if we can run over time, but I wanted to just show you with, you know, right alongside of the power of this scripting engine, if you throw in automated remediation on top of that. Um, so if you go in to automated remediation here, I'll just show you kind of like a use case where you can set your conditions. And again, this could be straight from like a process monitor. Um, absolutely, this is where it'll take you with the predefined process right here. But if you're saying like, hey, trigger category, you can say is, is not, or contains. Um, but you know, whatever that might be, maybe low hard drive space, for example, you can further define that condition. So if you wanted this automation only to run, if it was a certain operating system or even a specific customer, um, you can do that. So you can add additional conditions and then you set your actions. So once those conditions are met, you say, all right, you know, and obviously this doesn't have to be in any sort of order, but you could convert it to a ticket. You can predefine all of these fields. You have all of your available template tags you can drag and drop as well, but you can add a ton of actions. So you could run a script that then, like I was mentioning, could take care of the issue, clean up temp files, for example, but it could be that PowerShell module that also adds 30 minutes of billable time to that ticket. Um, so there's some really- you, you do have to do that with PowerShell though. You can't, you can't just come in here so, and I guess that's where I'm like, well, okay, that's cool, but why can't I just have one of the actions be create a ticket and then update the ticket 
with a note and with time? Why do I have to get PowerShell involved? That, I don't know. <laughs> I, I can ask, but yes, no, I see, I see what you're saying 100%, but yes, as of today, you do, it would have to be in that PowerShell module. No, and I mean, the fact that it's available at all is fantastic. And I see post to Slack as an option. So uh, obviously you have a Slack integration, which I mean, other RMMs have one as well, typically with a third party. So, so that's the other thing where like, you know, we might be paying you, let's call it 120 bucks a technician a month for the full thing. I, and I'm, I'm guessing, I don't remember the exact price. It's on your site. You mm -hmm. guys can figure it out, synchromsp.com. Um, and that, that really is kind of everything. Like it's got the RMM, the PSA, and then it's got all of these different integrations. Oh, see, oh, well, that's annual. So 110, $109. I mean, that's, that's not bad. And that's unlimited endpoints? Unlimited endpoints. And it's, it's got the remote control. Is it the best remote control? I don't know. Figure it out. Probably not. Let's be honest. I mean, Screen Connect has been out for so long that it's going to be a while before you guys catch up to it. But the fact that it like works natively on an iPad makes me want to give it a try. You know, like what's the worst that could happen? Uh, and then it's got all of these other integrations like It'll integrate directly to Slack. It'll integrate directly to Stripe. You don't have to pay for all of these other things to integrate your stuff. It, it integrates to QuickBooks and Xero too, right? Yep, exactly. And I think it's worth just, I mean, this is a nice little segue too. If you go to our app center and you scroll down to the bottom, we've also created some really phenomenal importer tools. So we try to also just make this transition just as easy as possible for you. Um, so just letting you know, there's, there's a lot of seamless options um, to try to help you out in that direction as well. That is really cool. So not only will you do the big guys like Autotask and ConnectWise, but you're even doing like Ninja, Atera. Like yeah. you guys aren't screwing around. No, we actually, and we have one um, for SolarWinds that just is, I think it's almost in its final stages. I just don't think it has an app card built. So yeah, we're really just trying to make that as easy as possible. We know that one of the biggest hurdles is just that headache of migrating. And so, yeah, we're trying to so, so something that was brought up in an earlier podcast is how there's just so much PE money right now in the channel, private equity money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything's getting bought up. You know, there's, there's mergers and acquisitions all over the place. Uh, right now, has, has Synchro taken, accepted whatever, any PE money? Nope. Nope. And I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't say if you were, but... <laughs> Are, are you guys, is, is that something that you guys are eventually wanting to do? Like, do you guys eventually want to get acquired by one of these big PE firms? Right now, no. Right now, we absolutely love what we're doing. We're privately funded, fully bootstrapped profitable company. Um, and we really love the software that we're making. And that's not, that's not something that we're looking at. That is so cool. So um, I, I was serious. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going through some of this training crystal. I'm, I'm doing a series of, of videos on Synchro um, just because you guys are one of the only and, and definitely possibly the biggest uh, MSP-centric tool out there that has not taken any PE money. So that's why I'm kind of... Um, I'm kind of want to, I want to go deeper with you guys and, and see what all you have to offer and really show the MSP community um, what you guys are all about. So I don't know, in, in maybe a week or two, I'm going to need to schedule another video and I'll, I'll go through the appropriate channels to get something scheduled. But I'm excited to see where this goes because I, I feel like your tool has a lot of power. It has, it has a lot of, um, it has a lot of potential and it already has a lot of power and, and that is huge. So I'm excited about this. 
Awesome. I'm excited too. Well, I appreciate your time and yeah, just shoot me an email. We'll set up another time if that makes sense and let me know if you have any questions. Awesome. Thanks so much, Crystal. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Take care.